Gute and welcome to another video. <laughs> Incredible start. German bug. Another. So, okay. Welcome to this new video. Way better. Uh, if you heard about modern text to speech or TTS or voice cloning, you probably already know about voice data set. Voice data sets are collections of recorded speech that is used to train these models. And they consist normally of audio files and corresponding text transcripts. And these voice data sets, they are crucial for developing high quality and natural sounding TTS voices. Some famous and popular ones are Library or Library Speech, Common Voice by Mozilla and LJ Speech, which we'll focus on in this video and tutorial. The LJ Speech voice dataset is a public domain speech dataset consisting of around 13,000 audio clips with a duration between 1 and 10 seconds each, recorded by a single speaker called Linda Johnson. So, Linda Johnson, LJ Speech. You know, probably you got the point already. Um, and it's prepared by Keith I2 to the famous and well known structure. We'll take a closer look soon. It was designed for training text to speech systems and it's wise, and it is widely, wisely, wisely and widely used to its high quality and its well structured format. Uh, the LJ speech voice dataset structure is supported on lots of modern TTS software to do personal voice cloning. So if you would like to clone your voice, you should probably know about this famous and widely and wisely supported <laughs> structure. We'll take a closer look soon. So by the end of this video, you will know why LJ Speech is so famous, how it's structured, how you can use this structure for your own personal voice clone. And I will tell some of my personal experience on how many recordings are required and useful to create a good sounding natural voice clone. And maybe I will add some other ideas if I think about one while doing this recording. <laughs> and I guess that's all for the intro. And now let's start with the actual topic. Let's start taking a look to this uh, famous LJ speech uh, voice data set. Uh, needless to say, I'll put all the links in the description box below. So as you can see, it's on the Keys Ito who prepared the structure website LJ speech data set. Uh, as you can see on the first view, probably it's a huge collection of voice data. So about 2.6 gigabytes of download um, size and uh, the page starting with some sample data. So let's give one of these samples a listen. The examination and testimony of the experts enabled the commission to conclude that five shots may have been fired. So maybe you recognize this voice because this voice data set is commonly used to train text-to-speech models on it. So um, this might sound quite familiar. Let's go down a little bit. You see this file format with a, a transcript CSV or metadata CSV. We'll take a closer look soon. And uh, some statistics, total clips, as I've mentioned, around 30,000, no, 13,000 clips with a duration of around 24 hours. So complete day and night. So, um, and here you can see some uh, short forms and how it's written in the long form. Keep this one in mind. We'll take a closer look when we take a look to the files in the actual voice data set. And uh, let's go down a little bit, some credits, and you can quote if you use the LJ speech voice data set in your research or projects. Um, that's a really good point <laughs> to take a look to Google Scholar to search for scientific papers and uh, stuff like that. So let's search for LJ speech. You can already see this is auto completed with data set. You can add TTS if you would like to. So you can see around 1800, not around, exactly 1800 results uh, used in this or by this LJ speech voice data set, even if we add specific use case, so text to speech, it's still 1370 <laughs> results. So you can see this LJ speech voice data set and its structure is commonly known in the 
research field and uh, community and whatever. You know what I mean, hopefully. Let me know in the comments if you have no idea what I'm talking about. And uh, let's take a look to the actual downloaded voice data set. So as you can see on the left side on my Explorer, this is really a super simple structure. We have this readme file, which is mainly the exactly content of this uh, web page of LJ Speech Voice Dataset. And we have a subfolder called WAFs for all the audio recordings, for all the WAV file-based audio recordings uh, with unique file names. So you see no subfolder structure all files are uh, with a unique file name. So you do not have to care about this LJ prefix. You can have unique identifier file names, whatever you like for your personal use case. But obviously, as all files are in one folder, obviously, all files need to have unique file names. And uh, one level up, so in the main directory, we have this metadata CSV. That is the file mapping the spoken text, so the transcript, with the actual unique file name from this WAFs subdirectory. So let's take a short look to this metadata CSV file. As you can see here, we have a super simple structure. We have this file name, this unique file name, without any folder and without the suffix, so no dot WAF for the wave extension here, uh, split by this pipe character, and then the actual text spoken in this recorded file name. And if we take a look to the right a little bit, you can see that here is another pipe. So file name, pipe, spoken text, pipe, and hmm, what's that? This seems to be exactly the same text. I can show you the difference when we search in this file for X-ray. X-ray, you ask? Why X-ray? Because I looked this up because I'm super professional prepared. <laughs> so, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, in this uh, line, for example, we have this X-rays and photographs, blah, 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 uh, began at about 8 PM. So you take a look to this short form. If we scroll to the right in this line and we can see began at about 8 p.m. So the number 8 is in the second column as a number written and in the third column it is the long written version of 8. And uh, you can see another example. So we stick with X-ray. Great example. Uh, let's go to the next line. We have this here. Uh, these are the surgeons observed through X-ray analysis. 30 or 40 tiny. Mm -hmm. And we take a look a little bit to the right. To the right. Okay, whatever. To the right. And um, we can see here this 30 or 40 in the long form. So the difference between the second and the third column obviously is the cleaning. So we have text cleaned in the third column. <laughs> so let's listen just to this one file here. So we have this LJ031 minus 0222 file name plus the wave extension. So let's open our explorer again. Go to the WAFs directory and uh, go to LJ031 minus 0222. Ha! Here we are. And uh, let's listen to this phrase. The surgeons observed through X ray analysis 30 or 40 tiny dust like fragments of metal. Okay, so this is exactly the wave mapping or matching this CSV entry. So if you would like to record your own voice data set, probably it's easy to use this LJ speech structure because it is simple structure. It is widely supported uh, on my personal GitHub repository. Again, link in the description box. I have some helper scripts 
and there's one script to all my Python developers called MRS, which is the short form for Mimic Recording Studio, um, to LJ Speech Structure. This is developed mainly for the use case if you record your voice using Minecraft's Mimic Recording Studio and would like to convert it to the LJ Speech Structure. But uh, you can adopt this script easily to your personal use case. So metadata uh, CSV, let's see. And you can see this script as a template to create the structure yeah, with your personal voice recordings. And uh, to show you last but not least that this structure is really widely supported. It has been supported by Koki TTS and it is um, supported in the actively maintained Piper um, text-to-speech repository. So if you see this pre-processing on Piper TTS voices, which is by the way, integrated in Home Assistant, so in the Smart Home Software Home Assistant, you can see this data set format LJ speech. Yeah, and finally, one asked question. How many recordings are required to create a good voice clone? So you can see the LJ speech uh, voice data set contains about 24 hours of pure audio. For my Torsten voice data sets, I've recorded over 30 hours of pure audio Ha! Take this, Linda Johnson and Keith Ito. No, uh, really credits to you people, amazing job. If you would like to do voice cloning, you need at least hours of pure audio. But there's no fixed number. Uh, I guess the more important part is that you record phrases that are phonetically balanced. Because this CTS, like Piper or Koki, they learn based on phonemes. So Choose your texts wisely, phonetically balanced, and do not just short phrases or long phrases. So try to do a mixture of short phrases and long phrases and everything in the middle, <laughs> because the model has to learn how to deal with short input text, with longer and even really long input texts. But do one recording per wave file, one phrase, one sentence per recording. And I hope you liked this video. If it is so, please give it a thumb up. Subscribe to my channel if you like my content in general. Share my video with other voice technology enthusiasts. And uh, let me know in the comments, finally, what you think on this video and on my still new recording setup and background. That's all for now. I hope you like it. And if you like, <laughs> we might see us next time. Bye.